Hey everybody, how's it going? So, this is the Enraged Blazing Emissary. This is Fire Advent, and they have made it a little bit easier than past ones, but this is difficult content still. So, a lot of people are going to want to do this. You want to buy all this stuff in the shop. You especially want to make sure you get these uh, Dark Connection bookmarks, and you get some of the important stuff like maybe the Speed Boxes and the Lifesteal Boxes. But I thought I would make this video to talk about how do you do this fight? Because traditionally, this was actually the hardest advent. I would say water was the easiest, then grass, then fire. But I found this advent to actually be really simple this time. So let me just quickly show you my run first of all, and then we can talk about it as we go about the mechanics of the fight. So here we are. Those are my three teams. I'll talk about them right after. But essentially, the first phase, what you want to do is you want to hit that turtle five times, I believe, while it has a debuff. If you do an attack that has a debuff attached to it, like Ambitious Tywin's S1, then it will actually just immediately count as one of the stacks as well. But if the boss also has a debuff such as Provoke or something like that, and you hit it with Emil Ken's S1 or his counterattack, it will also remove one of the stacks. If you don't do this five times, then Dazzled Magnar will have a buff for the rest of the fight um, in the second and third phase that you really want to get rid of. So essentially what I do is I just hit auto and I click on the turtle. So all my characters are just going to spam attack the turtle. Um, if you don't want to use a team like this, then I have some alternatives as well that I'll talk about after the video. But this is the simplest way to do it, because you are going to kill Magnar just from the amount of counterattacks you're doing, so you can just click on that turtle for the least amount of effort possible. It doesn't really matter if you're autoing Epic Hell, but this is just the simplest overall way with the least amount of clicks, so I figured I'd show you this way. As you can see, Magnar here is getting pretty close to dead without me really having to do anything, and it seems to be pretty simple so far. Ambitious Tywin is also able to remove some of the debuffs that I might get, but Emil Ken and Emil Blona are just really, really safe right here, even though they're wasting so much damage on this turtle that I'll never die. So once we get to that bar past the 1 4th health marker, that will be when we've won. Keep in mind, AoE attacks do not work on the turtle. You have to be using single attacks while it has a debuff. So you can't just use constant AoEs. Someone like Emil Yufin isn't really going to work all that well for this mode. And so the boss attacks again, gets countered, now we go to phase 2. So the gimmick on phase 2 is you have to attack the boss 5 times I believe, I think it's 5 while you have two buffs on your units. So, if you see Airwell right now, with a barrier, she already has two buffs. If Biblis has Invulnerability, which she's going to get from Aiden right here, and a shield, that would also count as two buffs. So, it's pretty simple overall. Look, I have four buffs right here. That's going to do one stack. This team is overall pretty darn safe. Essentially, you just don't really take that much damage when you have Arrow on Biblis. Biblis is constantly, pun constantly punishing these counterattacks you're going to take from the two adds right here. And when you're countering, uh, she's proccing her S2 right here, putting debuffs on the enemies and healing your team, and her S3 is also putting on a shield. So really defensive. She essentially is the healer and support all in one. Aiden just does a lot of damage, also pretty safe because she has that evasion. You don't really have to use somebody like Aiden. But you just need some really solid damage, and it helps if there's somebody that can put up a buff on themselves as well. But as you can see, having some effectiveness on Biblis is really helpful because we get those defense breaks. I'm also using the artifact Misconfi on her, Elfelt's artifact, which gives me a chance to defense break on S1, just so that I can have more uptime of it and overall just be able to take the adds out, or take this mob out much easier. Look, Aiden just hits so hard right there, just really, really simple. Keep in mind that the slower you do each phase, the worse off you'll be, because the boss has a constant stacking mechanic every single turn, and so if you take way too long, then you're going to get to the third phase and the boss is going to have a million stacks of speed and damage, and you might just get completely wiped. So the faster you're able to do the first and second phase, the more helpful it'll be. So Aiden's S3 right here. I think phases the boss. Yep, right there. And now we go to the final phase. This is the hardest phase. And I specifically wanted to show this run that I had of Epic Hell because this was probably the most unlucky and worst run that I had. To show you how constantly doable this team is. So I first tried to go for a one-shot team with Sigrid. It was miserable. It did not work well at all. But doing a team like this with Daydream, Joker, Shu, and Breeg was actually going really, really, really well. 
So essentially, each time you crit the boss, it actually gets a stack of increased damage until it takes its next turn. So look, that gives one stack right there. Here's another stack. And so it just keeps taking more and more damage the more attacks you do before it gets its next turn. Also, if you don't crit the boss, it actually cleanses debuffs. So you'll notice right there my Amelia actually crit, which was lucky, but it doesn't really matter much. But if the boss has defense break and you don't crit, you're just going to cleanse the defense break. So you have to make sure that you're critting all of the time. So as we can see right here, we almost have <laughs> taken it out ever so slowly. What's so powerful about Shu here is that you get to use all of those souls you see at the bottom. This is not a full auto team. I know, I know. It's not as good as it could be, but it does just work out really well and it's really safe. As you can see, like, I'm just in no danger. Like, sure, we have all these debuffs, but Amelia is easily able to top me up and you just have to slowly rotate around until you get a defense break with Brig and then look at the damage start to come out. Look at this. Sure, Shu isn't proccing at all. I'm getting pretty unlucky, but look at this. One proc, look how much damage that does. So much. It's just such a secure and safe team overall, and I think it works out pretty well. This was a pretty secure and simple epic hell run. Sure, it wasn't full auto, but it worked fine, right? All right, and we're back. So, essentially, I was able to do all of epic hell in like an hour or something like that. I was able to kind of finish all that stuff and work on my reputation and start spamming all of those things. Epic Hell traditionally has been really difficult, but what are some other teams that you could use if you want to do Epic Hell? I can't go back into Epic Hell, so let me just mock them up right here. A lot of people are saying for Team 1, you could actually do something such as Emma Landy, Emma Selene are a couple of really good characters there with Ambitious Taiwan. Essentially, all you really need is somebody that's actually able to debuff the turtle and then some single attackers. If you don't want to go full auto and you actually want to more manual play it, it's actually even simpler because then you don't really need constant counterattacks. You can just have someone that's able to put the debuff on the turtle and keep S1ing them while the debuff's on there and then focus the boss right after. So it's much simpler than it seems really. Like, look, I don't even have triple of a um, element, so I don't need the full bonus. On the second team, I've seen people also use Lionheart Sermia as some of the DPS because the enemies are constantly counterattacking. You can use other healers, you could use someone like DN to put a bunch of buffs on you if you're having trouble keeping enough buffs on the team. Um, it's overall just a lot of different things that you can use here. You just need a solid healer of some sort. You could use someone like Rowana possibly even maybe. Um, but I don't really recommend using grass units overall on this entire thing. But uh, I have seen a lot of Lionheart Sermia that people are using. And on this final fight. So, this final one is pretty difficult. What I will say is I don't think you need these three units. I do think that Shu is probably the most optimal, but if you're not using someone like Shu, you could potentially be using um, maybe somebody like Spectre Tenebra, you know, a character that soul burns to do a bunch of damage. Possibly, if we want to get really crazy, someone like Roy Mustang, or someone who just is able to soul burn constantly hit like Milum, Spectre Tenebria. But I do think it's obviously best to use a blue team. If you don't have someone like Brig, you just need somebody that defense breaks, so you could even go with someone like Karina, although she's not adding a lot of damage. Um, someone like Clarissa could probably work. If you don't want to use someone like Amelia, well, I would say it's a little bit difficult, but I think Montmorency works totally fine, because realistically, these are both health scalers, so you don't even really need the attack buff. It's completely pointless. So just having someone that's constantly able to cleanse is all that's really important. Um, if you want to go for a one-shot, go ahead, but I don't entirely recommend it. But essentially, those are just some sample other units that you could potentially use. Um, since I explained the mechanics during the fights, um, you might be able to find some characters of your own that you can use if you don't have any of the possibilities that I've said. Keep in mind, don't feel bad if you can't do this. Epic Hell is really, really difficult. And also, keep in mind, you don't actually need to do Epic Hell to be able to buy all the Dark Connections. Because just from doing the reputation rewards, you do get that. And I believe in here you are able to purchase as many Inferno Origins as you actually need to be able to buy these bookmarks. So you can actually just get all of those and then I think like two of these boxes. However, you won't be able to get the rest of the boxes if you don't do Epic Hell at least, you know, one time. But I wouldn't really worry too much about that. It's not that big of a deal. You're not losing out too much, but... If you're unable to do any of this event and you're a newer player, don't feel bad, it's okay. This content is mainly aimed as at late game players, and it doesn't really matter. It's honestly just filler content, it's not really that important, so don't worry about it too much. But anyways, I hope that this video helped you, and thanks a bunch for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you next time.